On the first day of class, a professor at the University of Florida divided his film photography students in two groups. Everyone on the left side of the classroom, he explained, would be in the quantity group. They would be graded solely on the amount of work they produced. On the final day of class, he would solely the number of photos submitted by each student. 100 photos would grade an A, 90 photos a B, 80 photos a C, and so on. Meanwhile, everyone on the right side of the room would be in the quality group. They would be graded only on the excellence of their work. They would only need to produce one photo during the semester, but to get an A, it had to be a nearly perfect image. At the end of the term, he was surprised to find that all the best photos were produced by the quality group. During the semester, these students were busy taking photos, experimenting with composition and lighting, testing out various methods in the darkroom and learning from their mistakes. In the process of creating hundreds of photos, they honed their skills. Meanwhile, the quality group sat around speculating about perfection. In the end, they had little to show for their efforts, other than unverified theories and one mediocre photo. It is easy to get bogged down trying to find the optimal plan for change. The fastest way to lose weight, the best program to build muscle, the perfect idea for a side hustle. We are so focused on figuring out the best approach that we never get around to taking action. I refer to this as the difference between being in motion and taking action. The two ideas sound similar but they are not the same. When you are in motion, you are planning and strategizing and learning. Those are all good things, but they don't produce a result. Action, on the other hand, is the type of behavior that will deliver an outcome. If I outline 20 ideas for articles I want to write, that's motion. If I actually sit down and write an article, that's action. If I search for a better diet plan and read a few books on the topic, that's motion. If I actually eat a healthy meal, that's action. Sometimes motion is useful, but it will never produce an outcome by itself. It doesn't matter how many times you go to talk to the personal trainer, that motion will never get you in shape. Only the action of working out will get the result you're looking to achieve. If motion doesn't lead to results, why do you do it? Sometimes we do it because we actually need to plan or learn more. But more often than not, we do it because motion allows us to feel like we're making progress without running the risk of failure. Most of us are experts at avoiding criticism. It doesn't feel good to fail or to be judged publicly, so we tend to avoid situations where that might happen. And that's the biggest reason why you slip into motion rather than taking action. You want to delay failure. It's easy to be in motion and convince yourself that you're still making progress. You think, I've got conversations going with four potential clients right now, this is good, we're moving in the right direction. Or I brainstormed some, some ideas that book I want to write. This is coming together. Motion makes you feel like you're getting things done, but really you're just preparing to get something done. When preparation becomes a form of procrastination, you need to change something. You don't want to merely be planning, you want to be practicing. If you want to master a habit, the key is to start with repetition, not perfection. You don't need to map out every feature of a new habit, you just need to practice it. You just need to get your reps in.